Ecclesiastes chapter number one, and hold your place there, as well as Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And hold your place there as well. We are going to finish the life of Solomon, and I think of no better way of doing so than doing an entire book study in Ecclesiastes tonight. So I hope you know that you're going to be here for like three hours. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, it will be, be relatively quick. Uh, I've heard that the, uh, the worst thing a pastor could say is, oh, this, this will be a short sermon. So uh, we'll see how, how long we go tonight. Ecclesiastes chapter number one. We'll be looking at verses one and two. And then we're going to go over to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. 13 and 14. So the first two verses of the book and the last two uh, verses of the book. Verse number one of chapter number one. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Now turn with me, chapter 12, verse number 13 and 14. 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's pray and ask for his blessing on us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. It's inspired through your spirit. It is beneficial for us in every aspect of our life. Father, may you help us tonight to know you better. May you help us tonight to love you most. And Father, may you just help me as I speak. May the words, your words, Penetrate all of our hearts that we might be closer and closer, focused on you and things of eternity. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon. You see in verse number one, chapter number one, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Now, this could have been many different. People, you, you could say, well, the king of da or the king of Israel, the son of David. Well, that could refer to any number of David's descendants. But specifically speaking, there's only one that has the idea about wisdom behind them, and that would be Solomon. Solomon, the son of David, the king in Jerusalem. And interesting about Solomon, as we looked at his life, he had a very interesting life. And we'll just kind of recap for everybody his life. First, he was the second born to David and Bathsheba. The first one, of course, uh, did not make it because of David's sin. And God says, I'm going to take your young one. And so God does, did. But in comforting uh, David and Bathsheba, they came and had another child. His name was Solomon. Uh, interesting. His name means peace. And he was in an era of peace. He had no real warfare until after the fact that he sinned and God had told him this is what's going to happen. And so he had major peace in order for him to build the temple. But it's quite interesting that God actually gave him another name. The other name is Jedediah. So most of us would not recognize the name Jedediah as another name for King Solomon. But it's true, the name means beloved of the Lord. What a wonderful life that he has, that he came into the world and was destined to be the next king of Israel. He was destined by God to fulfill the promise that he made to David and given him a sure house. But also on top of that, he was going to use Solomon in order to build his temple. And that he did. And then we saw his wisdom. And when Queen of, Bash or Queen of Sheba. I knew I was going to slip up. Uh, the Queen of Sheba came. And was wondering if 
what she had heard was what was reality. And when she asked him all the questions, she marveled at his responses. And after he shows her his kingdom, she said, the half has not been told to me. So much that God has made that is greater than any other king. God has blessed you, Solomon, above every other king in the nations. Amazing to see Solomon. But last week we saw, unfortunately, he had a, well, Achilles heel. That's a, a idiom to say there was one weakness that Solomon had. And that was he married too many women. Way too many. He had a thousand wives. Think about that. Think about how, you know, every day was somebody's birthday, evidently. You know, you know whose birthday is it today? Here you go. You, know. um, <laughs> you think about it. Every, oh, I guess three every day, it seems like, if, if the math equals out. But we really don't know. But yet he had that problem. And God had told him before, through various different means, we saw last week, that he should not marry all these women. Because the ramifications of him marrying the women, his heart then turned from God and onto idols. In fact, it was worse than that. He built altars to these pagan gods and then worshipped them at the altar that he Wow, Solomon has fallen quite, quite quickly. And it says that when he was old, that God spoke to him this time and says, because you have done this, I am going to discipline you, basically. My paraphrase. And so we have many people coming against Solomon in his last days. So many people. But then we see the book of Ecclesiastes. He wrote Solomon Solomon when he was young, and in love. He wrote the book of Proverbs when he was uh, probably a young king with endued with all this wisdom that he had. That he answered Queen of Sheba's request. But Ecclesiastes, he wrote near the end of his life when he was far from God because his heart was towards the idols of his wife. And so because of that, Ecclesiastes was written. I was listening to a, a, a Christian comedian, and uh, we were just uh, you know, wanting to laugh and, and all that. And uh, he was going through a few of his bits, and it was pretty funny. And then all of a sudden, the air started being a little different. I'm thinking, what is going on? What, what's the purpose? It's no longer funny. Now he's gotten real. And he talked about how he was a terrible person. And that uh, many of the different things that he had done, he was addicted to cocaine, he was a drinker, and various things like that. And then eventually, after his wife wanted a divorce, they got within 10 minutes of going to the courthouse in order to make it official, the wife says, no, this isn't right, let's go home. And so this man really had nothing left. His wife then took the kids that they had and went to her parents and basically told them, you figure something out. We're about to lose the house. Figure something out. And he had a bunch of tapes from a pastor that he never listened to. He didn't even want to. Uh, but then he's like, okay, well, I might as well listen to one of these. And it was all on the floor because his wife threw them on the floor. And so he, he picked up just one random one. Puts it in the cassette tape player. And you know what it was? Book of Ecclesiastes. <laughs> and, uh, and he had gotten to a point where he tried all the different religions of the world. And he understood that none of them satisfies. And then he just listened to Ecclesiastes as everything is vanity. Vanity of vanity. And then he went through the entire book. And at the end... He was talking to a, the friend that had given him the tapes in the first place. And he's like, well, what do you think? He's like, well, my conclusion about the book of Ecclesiastes is either Jesus is right and everything else is wrong, or I should end my life tonight. And so he gave his life to Christ. 
through the book of Ecclesiastes, of all things. So we see in verse number two of chapter number one, vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. That word has this idea of very temporary, meaningless. Uh, one would say a soap bubble. You, it's here now and gone at the next. The actual word is also used for a, to signify that of vapor. Like when I opened up my hood on Sunday, and lo and behold, my, my engine was smoking uh, from the alternator. I didn't know what alternator was until that moment. I thought, <laughs> that must be it. So, because I looked it up on Google, I'm like, what could cause this, this, and this? Alternator, serpentine belt. Okay, I didn't know any of these words before, so I'm looking at it. Well, that must be it. So, uh, that's the alternator. And so, all of this smoke is, is coming out of, of my engine, and then vanity would be me trying to grab that smoke, that vapor, <laughs> trying to keep it here. Uh, how successful do you think I would be if I tried to do that? Not very. No, it's gone. <laughs> That's this word, vanity of vanities. Through Ecclesiastes, Solomon goes through many different things that he focused on that at the end he says this is utterly vanity. It's futile in thinking about. The first one is that of worldly wisdom. We see that in chapter 1, verse number 13 and onward. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under the sun. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of men to be exercised therewith. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of the spirit. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I commune with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart hath had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. I gave my heart to no wisdom and to no madness and folly. I perceived that this also is vexation of spirit. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. So he tried to focus on just getting all the wisdom that he can, every, every bit of wisdom that this world has to offer. And he, he got so much, but yet at the end, vanity, vexation of spirit. It's a grief. So focusing on worldly wisdom does not help you with being happy in life. It does not give you fulfillment in life. That is not the thing that we should focus on. Second thing that he tried is, is that of worldly pleasures. In chapter number two, verse number one, it says, I said in mine heart, go to, go to now, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore enjoy pleasure, and behold, this also is vanity. If you look at verse number three, it says, I saw it in mine heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting mine heart with wisdom and to lay hold on folly till I might see what was the, that good for the sons of men which they should do under the sun all the days of their life and so all, he continues but think about it he tries pleasure and pleasure he referring to is that of wine according to the oriental custom I do not believe that's alcoholic wine he's after the kings at this point in time what they would drink is not alcoholic wine, but rather freshly squeezed grape juice. Now we can argue about that, but that's what I think. Yeah. And so he's like, I'm giving my heart to wine to get all the pleasure that I can possibly muster. Vanity. Vanity. What we focus on in this world, if it's not what we should focus on, it is vanity, it's vexation of spirit, it is that vapor that you cannot grab a hold. This is what Solomon in his last days is concluding. He has tried it all. He also the worldly accomplishments in chapter number two, verse number four, I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I have made me uh, gardens and orchards and I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruits. Boy, this guy must have had a lot of good, fresh vegetables and 
fruits. That doesn't sound appealing to me, but that sounds appealing to people that actually take care of them. Anyway, um, I may be pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth the tree. Wow. All the accomplishments that he could ever have, he did. He was the wealthiest person on the face of the planet. He had all the gold. He overlaid just about everything in the temple with gold. Just an amazing thought. Yeah. Trying to over overlay your house with pure gold. How rich you must be. <laughs> now, we think about that, but yet he says it's vanity. Then we see that his worldly possessions, he tried to get more and more. In verse number seven, I got me servants and maidens. I had servants born in my house. Also, I had great possessions of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I gathered me also silver and gold and the pecul peculiar treasure of kings and of the provinces. I got me men singers and women singers that, and the lights of the sons of men as musical instruments that all that of all sorts. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me and whatsoever my eyes desire I kept not from them I withheld not my heart from any joy for my any for my heart rejoiceth in all my labor and this was my portion of my labor then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought and on the labor that I had labored to do and behold all was You think about all these you know, millionaire moguls that create such great empires. Um, why does he say that? In, in chapter 2, notice with me what, what happens in verse number 18. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over all my labor wherein I have labored and wherewith, wherein I have shown myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. One day, the things that you accumulate, it's not going to be yours anymore. Don't focus on possession. Don't focus on pleasures. Don't focus on accomplishments. Don't focus on the worldly wisdom that this world has to offer because it is foolish. It's vanity. Meanless, vapor, so forth. It's here now, gone the next day. That is temporary things. Focusing on temporary things is absolutely futile. That's what Solomon concludes after trying everything. And then writes it down. It's a waste. It's a waste. Then now turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. What isn't a waste, Solomon finally concludes at the end of more and more chapters than what we have to look at tonight. Here's his conclusion. I love his conclusion because it's absolutely true. Verse number 13 of chapter 12. <clears throat> Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. This is the, the culmination of everything that he has learned from chapter 1 all the way through half of chapter 12. Fear God and keep his commandments. That's it. Fear God, have reverence for God, put him number one, and do what he says. That's it. Everything else besides doing that is worthless. That's what Solomon says in his last days before he passes off the scene into glory. That's what for each and every one of us, we need to remind ourselves each and every day, focus on God. <laughs> Eternal things are so much more important than things that are, yeah, they're nice, you know. You, know, you get to see your, your show or whatever you, you see on TV or, or the, the films that you see yeah, that are nice. Oh, uh, the exercise that we could do and more of. Uh, <laughs> that's nice, but it's temporary. The books that we could read, which there are plenty of books. I love what Solomon says about that. Verse number 11, uh, the words of the wise are as goats, 
that's not the right verse, verse 12. And further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. That's, that's a student's number one Bible verse right there. Uh, <laughs> see, see, uh, so many books. There's no end. Weariness of the flesh. Anyway, but for us, we need to focus on God and do what he says. Because that is the most important thing that we can be about. I love what Jonathan Edwards, he was a, uh, uh, a pastor in the, I believe it was the 1700s. He, uh, he wrote down these resolutions that he was going to do and make sure that he was going to do them. Uh, many people would say, well, that's legalism today. Well, he just wanted to make sure that he was on track. And one of his resolutions, one of my favorite ones that he wrote, was that I'm going to live in such a way that my next life will be the best it can be. I'm going to live in such a way that the next life going to be the best it can be. And the only way we can do that is if we focus on God and do what he says. That's what Solomon's last words of, about life is all about. Let's pray and the Lord's blessing on our time to pray one for another. Dear Father, we thank you so much for giving us your word. We thank you that, that Solomon understood the folly of the things that he focused on. We thank you so much that he shows us at the end, seeing everything that he has done, seeing all the things that he possessed, seeing all the different people that were under his rule, that he concluded that there's no greater thing than to fear you, keep your commands. Help us so to focus on eternity that living in heaven would